This is a demonstration of a chloride drop count test kit using endpoint ID procedures. The first step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to select the appropriate sample size. You want to select a sample size that matches the equivalency you would like to use. In this example, we are going to use a 25 ml sample. Therefore, our equivalency is one drop equals 10 parts per million as chloride. The next step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to take an accurate sample. The smallest change in sample size will lead to inaccurate results. Before gathering your sample, it's important to rinse the vial three times with the sample to be tested. This minimizes the chance of contamination from a previous titration. To get an accurate sample size, you want to hold the vial close to eye level. Once you feel you have an accurate sample, place the vial on a level surface and bend down to eye level. When performing a drop count titration, a white background can provide contrast to better see the color changes. A cabinet tray or a white paper towel can provide that contrast. The next step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to add two drops of phenolphthalein indicator. The bottle contains a dropper tip, so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each reagent, it's important to swirl the vial to make sure the reagents are properly mixed. In this example, the sample is turned pink, indicating that there is alkalinity that needs to be neutralized before the chloride test can continue. According to the endpoint ID procedure, alkalinity titrant is used to do that neutralization. The bottle contains a dropper tip, so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each drop of titrant, it's important to swirl the vial to make sure the reagents are properly mixed. The alkalinity has been neutralized when the sample turns from pink to colorless. If the sample had not turned pink, the addition of the alkalinity titrant can be skipped. The next step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to add six drops of potassium chromate indicator. The bottle contains a dropper tip, so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each reagent, it's important to swirl the vial to make sure the reagents are properly mixed. The next step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to perform the titration. Each bottle of titrant is labeled with the equivalency and sample size it was manufactured for. It's important to make sure you have the proper titrant and the proper sample size for this titration. The bottle of titrant contains a dropper tip, therefore it's important to hold the bottle vertically to make sure you get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each drop of titrant, you want to swirl the vial to make sure the sample is properly mixed. According to the endpoint ID procedure, the titration is complete when the sample is changed from yellow to brick red.